Hello and welcome to another episode. Today is the day the Kia EV3 was revealed by Kia on the worldwide YouTube channel and also many other YouTube channels. I, I, I was watching the fully charged version with Jack Scarlett at the same time as I was watching the worldwide reveal. It looks very much like the concept on the outside but also on the inside which is a surprise. Very minimalist and, and all very quite similar. It's almost disappointing because we've already seen it way back in is it October or November last year? These are all the details I've gathered. The most disappointing thing today is that no pricing has been released, which uh, is vital information. So according to the fully charged video, Jack said that they still intend to sell the Nero EV. But if the EV3 comes in at a lower price, I can't see them selling many Nero EVs anymore. The top spec one of this bl will blow the e Nero EV out of the water along with its new technology. Anyway, this is what I've gathered together from the press releases. Bold, progressive exterior of innovative, practical interior that maximizes space, functionality and comfort, which is what an EGMP dedicated EV would do compared to the Nero EV. So you would get more space on the inside and from the review I saw with Jack, you do get that. Best in class 600 kilometers AER, which is the probably the Korean driving cycle. 10 to 80% charging in 31 minutes. That's 128 kilowatts DC char fast charging speed on, on the long range version. The long range version has got an 81.4 kilowatt hour battery and the normal standard model has got a 58.3 kilowatt hour battery. So that would put it at a slight disadvantage to the Nero EV you would think, but they built in some new technologies that might improve the range. It's got the, the new Kia AI Assistant, premium streaming, advanced driving system systems and over-the-air updates, which is very similar to what's in the EV9. It's the same head unit and uh, CCNC entertainment system. The EV3 is similar in size to the, to the Nero EV, but slightly wider. I'll do this in millimetres. 4,300 millimetres long, 850 millimetres wide, 1,560 millimetres high, and has a wheelbase of 2,680 millimetres. It features a state-of-the-art front-wheel drive system, powertrain based on, on the EGMP, utilising Kia's fourth-generation battery technology. Both models utilise a 150 kilowatt electric motor, which enables a best 0 to 100 kilometres per hour acceleration time in 7.5 seconds. The EV3's maximum speed is 170 kilometres per hour. A GT line trim is also confirmed. The car features enhanced body aerodynamics, incorporating a 3D undercover to deliver an impressively low drag coefficient of 0.263. State-of-the-art battery management unit and cell monitoring unit technology ensures the 58.3 and the 81.4 high voltage battery systems use energy as efficiently as possible. So, so that's the improved efficiency I mentioned earlier on. The vehicle's advanced driving system systems Technology includes electric dynamic torque vectoring control, which is EDTVC, to ensure the EV3 transfers its power to the road smoothly and stably. Forward collision avoidance assist, lane keeping assist, highway driving system, reverse parking collision avoidance assist, provide additional support and reassurance for drivers on every journey, no matter how short or how long. Kia's remote smart parking assist enables owners to Maneuver the EV3 confidently and safely in, into and out of tight spaces without the driver having to sit in the vehicle. Bringing further value to the compact EV SUV sector, the 12 inch head of display projects information on the windshield to minimise driver distraction. I'm guessing this is the GT line. The EV3 is the first model to benefit from Kia's new iPedal version 3 regen braking technology which allows the driver to adjust the level of regen braking according to their preference, enabling one-pedal driving. This maximizes energy efficiency and noticeably reduces fatigue on long drives, enabling the vehicle to travel further on a single charge and making the journey more engaging, enjoyable and comfortable. So again, that's the second technology that improves range. Kia's Digital Key 2 enables customers to avoid the hassle of carrying around physical keys, Although you do need a physical key when the 12 volt battery will inevitably fail and you need to, a way to get into the car. So remember that. So you can unlock your car and start the car with a smartphone and a smartwatch. They can also conveniently share EV3's digital key with friends and family. Kia provides various streamable content through its premium streaming service delivered by via LG's automotive content platform, ACP, powered by WebOS. 
Kia also offers arcade games, allowing occupants to enjoy in-car gaming. The immersive experience is further enhanced by the sound quality of the EV Freeze Harman Kardon audio system, which delivers an experience akin to a home cinema. Providing the ability to digitally customise the EV Freeze interior through the Kia Connect store in the same way one would personalise a smartphone, alongside the introduction of Kia's AI assistant, these examples further highlight how the EV Freeze responds to customers' ever-evolving needs. Well, we'd be nice to be able to do that without having to pay for it by the Kia Connect store, wouldn't it? If it was like a phone, you'd just be able to do it in the car. The EV3 is the first EV model to feature Kia's AI assistant technology, which recently made its debut on the Kia K4 Compact Saloon. This technology provides customers with new and innovative ways to interact with and control the vehicle's features directly and intuitively enhancing convenience and optimising productivity during their time in the vehicle. This human-like assistant will always support and inspire users as they explore the world. Kia will soon commence the rollout of these features across other EV models, starting with the EV3. It's all well and good as long as you've got a data signal. I notice that the charge port is located in the front right wing, which is probably a better place than on the nose. Um, the technical specs I will put on screen now along with the charging speeds and dimensions. Just missing some weights and I have no weights in there. Battery options 58.3 and 81.4 kilowatt hours. No targeted range on the 58 but they're giving 600 kilometers on the 81.4. Power is the same so there's no all-wheel drive setup on this. 150 kilowatts or 204 horsepower. Torque 283 Nm. DC charging power on the 58.3 is 102 kilowatts and 128 kilowatts on the long range version. Uh, DC charging time is given as 31 from 10 to 80 percent, and that's for the long range, not for the small battery. Front legroom 1060, rear legroom 950, front headroom 1015, rear headroom 955. Storage space in litres, the boot with the rear seats upright is 460 litres, the boot with the rear seats folded is 1250 litres. There is a small frunk in the front, 25 litres, that looks really small from the pictures I've seen, which I'll put on screen. All those dimensions are in millimetres. And the last bit of information I've got, the EV3 will be introduced first in Korea in July 2024, followed by its European launch in the second half of the year. Kira has plans to further expand the sales of the EV3 into other countries, regions, with subsequent launches to be expected after the European market entry. No pricing details are available yet, which is a great shame as this is crucial information. I've also seen images of the Kira EV3 towing stuff, but no details on the towing weight. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Um, if I find out any more news on the pricing or anything else, I'll put them in the Kira Electric News episode which I've got to do after I come back from fully charged tomorrow. Anyway, I hope you find this useful. Thank you for watching.